For each and every object on this earth, we have managed to discover how everything moves and works. Not only that, we also studied and concluded how the biggest planets, stars and galaxies move in this universe. However, while we have managed to understand this massive universe, but there is still one area that remains mysterious, and that is the world inside a tiny atom. Yes, we can say an atom is the reason for the birth of the universe, but we still don't fully understand what goes on inside atoms and how the particles within them function. This is because all the physics principles or scientific principles that we have discovered so far, these physics formulae simply don't work on the subatomic scale. Most importantly, the electrons don't care about the physics formulas we have. For example, let's say you're standing in one place. If I ask you to turn in clockwise direction, you can. And if I ask you to rotate in opposite direction, you can turn. But what if I ask you to rotate in both directions at the same time? You can't rotate, right? But surprisingly, the electrons inside the atoms can spin in both the directions at the same time. But how? We don't know. For now, that's a mystery. And our scientists haven't solved this yet. Just like one medicine can't cure all diseases, no single scientific theory works in everywhere. The deeper we go into the microscopic world, the more exceptions we will see in classical physics. And that's why we need quantum mechanics or quantum physics to understand these very small and unusual particles. Yes, I agree quantum physics is one of the most difficult topics in science, but it is also the most interesting subjects if you listen carefully. I promise I'll explain the quantum physics in such an interesting way so you can easily understand the basics. So be an alpha and watch the video till the end. Welcome to the underrated channel. To understand quantum physics, first we need to know what are particles and waves. For those who don't know what is particle and a wave, let me give you a brief. A particle is essentially a tiny unit of matter like a grain of sand on a beach or a speck of dust in the air or whatever small thing you consider, it's a particle. In short, particles have mass. Now let's consider waves. A wave is like a ripples in water or the radio waves we receive. Remember, waves move continuously and doesn't settle at one location like particles do. So now we have an idea on particles and waves. Let's get into the topic. Every visible object in this world, be it your phone, bike, a tree, a bird, and why not a human, everything is made up of atoms, which we cannot see with the naked eyes. These atoms are further composed of subatomic particles like protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons and neutrons are located at the center of an atom, while electrons revolve around them. This is the image of an atom that we have seen in our childhood. In our schools, we learn that electrons move around nucleus as particles, right? But that's not true. In reality, electrons actually exist as waves. If we take a real photograph of an atom, this is what it would look like. Electrons moving as a cloud around the nucleus. Now comes the mysterious thing. Since electrons exist in the waveform, we can't correctly determine their location. An electron can be present in multiple locations at the same time. This is one of the mysteries of the quantum world. Let me compare this with your real time. Could you be at your home, your office and at a restaurant all at once? No, of course not. But in the quantum world, electrons can do this. So if you ask me, hey buddy, but where exactly an electron is in this picture, then based on the probabilities calculated using the wave function, we can tell the electron could be in this location. And the wave function is the square of the amplitudes of the wave. In this graph, wherever the amplitude is high, the electron is more likely to be present at that location. Now comes the interesting part. Until we measure the electron's position, it remains in all possible locations in a waveform. But once we pinpoint the electron's position, wave function collapses and the electron takes the form of a particle at that exact point. This phenomena is known as superposition. When we think about an electron being both a wave and a particle at the same time, it can seem confusing. But in the quantum world, this is entirely possible. Let's look at an example. Ima imagine we flip a coin and if I ask you is the coin is in heads position or in the tails position, you cannot tell that, right? It's like it's in both heads and tail positions simultaneously until we actually observe it. Then it becomes either heads or tails. This is the superposition state. Similarly, an electron can exist both as a particle and a wave simultaneously. But when we measure it, it collapses to one state. To understand this further, let's look at another famous example, the Schrodinger cat's experiment. Imagine putting a cat in a closed box with a poison. Now let's say that poison has a 50-50 chance of being released. Now until we open the box, we don't know if the cat is alive or dead. 
We don't know the superposition state yet. Quantum physics suggests that the cat exists in a superposition of being both alive and dead at the same time. But the moment we open the box, we see it in one of the two states. In the same way, an electron is not settled as a particle, but its presence is distributed as a wave across space. And when we observe it, it collapses to a single position as a particle. This phenomenon, where an electron behaves as both a wave and a particle, is known as wave-particle duality. This dual nature of electrons is what actually gave sleepless nights to scientists for decades and this led to some more interesting discoveries in quantum physics including the double slit experiment which we will discuss now. Alright, this is one of the game changing experiments in quantum physics so please listen carefully. Imagine we have a gun that shoot tennis balls towards a wall with a single slit in the middle and there is another wall behind it to catch the balls. If we shoot the balls, then most of the balls will hit the first wall and stop there, whereas few balls will pass through the slit and creates a single line pattern on the wall behind like you can see here. Now, if we add a second slit, we would get two patterns corresponding to two slits, right? Please note that up until now, we are passing particles in this case like tennis balls. But what if we try the same experiment with waves? When we pass waves through a single slit, they travel through it and hit the wall in a single pattern. But with two slits, the waves passing through each slit meet and interfere with each other, creating a more complex interference pattern on the wall behind like this. Just a small recap. With the with the two slits, the electrons gave the two pattern result and the wave gave interference pattern result. Now, when scientists conducted the same experiment at quantum level with electrons, then with a single slit, we got a single line pattern. But with two slits, instead of forming two particle-like patterns, they created an interference pattern similar to what waves produced earlier. Scientists were stunned and shocked. The mystery number one. The electrons we sent through double slit were in the form of particles, right? Then why did it create a wave-like interference pattern? I already told you one single electron can be present at multiple places at a time. Similarly, one single electron is passing through both the slits at a time and hence the electron somewhere in the journey travelled as waves and passing through both slits simultaneously and interfering with each other at other end and creating a wave-like interference pattern. They the scientists were so frustrated on electrons. They wanted to figure out the spot where exactly particle-like electrons are actually converting to waveform and then decided to set up detectors to observe the electrons passing through the slate. Now they found another shocking result, the mystery number two. When the detectors are on, the electrons behave like particles again and the two lens pattern was formed now instead of interference pattern. It is like the electrons knew they were being observed by something and changed their behavior accordingly. And when the detectors were removed, the electrons went back to creating an interference pattern behaving like waves again. Scientists were amazed. How could electrons sense they were being absorbed by something and change their form accordingly? This question of how electrons know they are being observed and change their form remains one of the biggest mysteries of quantum mechanics. Similar to this wave particle duality, there is another mind-blowing concept in the quantum world and that is the quantum entanglement. Alright, what is quantum entanglement? When two particles are created together, a unique connection forms between them. From that moment on, no matter how far they are from each other, they will behave in exact opposite directions. For example, imagine we flip two coins that have entanglement between them. Now no matter how far they are from each other, to be more precise, let's say two coins were placed at opposite side of the universe. Now, just because the two coins were entangled, if one coin lands heads, the other will immediately and definitely land tails. Now the question is, how does the second coin know that the first coin is landed on heads? It is like information is passed between them instantly, faster than speed of light, right? In the quantum world, when two electrons are entangled, one spins in one direction and the other spins in opposite direction even across larger distance. Now Einstein entered into the game. 
Einstein once concluded that nothing in this universe can travel faster than light. So Einstein had a problem with the statement on information travels faster than speed of light. He simply dismissed this entanglement theory as spooky accelerator distance and argued that there were no actual communication happening between particles at all. Einstein argued that there is no information passed between the electrons and the spin of these electrons or particles must have been determined from the moment they were created and gave an example that let's say you put a pair of gloves each in separate box now no matter how much distance you keep between these boxes if one box has a right hand glove then the second box will definitely have a left hand glove this means there is no information has passed between the gloves but later with the work of scientist john stewart bell it was confirmed that the particle spins were not predetermined they were actually affected instantly upon measurement proving entanglement to be real today this quantum entanglement is the reason that we have created a faster and more powerful quantum computers and whatever we have to admit that quantum mechanics remains a mysterious field revealing that the universe may not be as we imagined it when observed particles exist as waves but when we measure them they become particles this raises the question if the entire universe is made of these subatomic particles could the universe itself be shifting between wave and particle forms based on our observation and maybe our existing is also a mystery this reality itself behave like a quantum illusion we may never know but the quantum world will continue to challenge and expand our understanding of existence all right friends if you like this video please like comment and subscribe to the underrated channel and don't forget to share it with your friends and the future scientists out there